G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to install a retractable hose unit like this on a post like that, when you haven't got a wall or anywhere else to mount it properly. This is the perfect solution. Let's get into it. Here's the hose, still in its box, still in the shed. Hasn't been touched at all. So I'm going to attach that over in the front garden. Okay, here's our front garden. The hose comes out here and that's from our bore. It's bore fed and that's good because it's our own free bore water. But there is another tap over there in the main garden. That's town water and I don't want to use that. So whilst that would be an easy way to irrigate this front garden and this sort of new food forest that we're creating, I want this. I have to be really careful initially that I don't cut through the actual line, the water line. And then disaster struck. My post hole pincher broke. We've done a lot together. Many years, Posty and I, Post Holly, Post Pinchy, and I have dug many, many holes. And now it's all over. I'll have to replace him. Sorry, mate. You're off to the tip. I won't need these because that's to go into brickwork or masonry. I'll just need these and the washers to screw it into the post here. And along, what you could do is just use this to map out the holes. Now I like to use a drill bit that's slightly smaller in width than the screw or the bolt for this type of job because this is going to then have more resistance when it screws in and it tells you in the instructions to use a 5mm bit but I'm using just slightly smaller than that, it's about 4 I'm also not going to go to the depth of this screw with the drill bit or the hole I'm going to probably go three quarters and I'm going to let the screw screw in and get more resistance in that last bit. That way it's going to hold it on a little bit more secure. It's the next day and the post is set really firm in the concrete as it should have 
That is rock solid. All right, let's pull it out and see how it works. Well, that's plenty long enough. It reaches right to the end of the fence line, as you saw, which is as far as I can go anyway. And it's going to reach into our food forest for any spot watering and that type of thing that we need to do. So that's bloody perfect. Rightio, let's just wrap this video up with a few final points on the installation of one of these retractable hoses, whatever brand you're gonna use. First of all, the height. Now, that was a big factor for me because I don't like bending over too much. It's surprising how annoying it can be if you've got a hose set too low, where you've got to constantly reach down. One of the main reasons for them is convenience. And you don't want to take away a convenience factor by making it too low to the ground. That's just becoming inconvenient. So for me, I wanted it at a height where I could just easily pull out without bending over too much. The other thing about height is the hose, of course. Now this doesn't have anything to prop itself up on. So it'll just hang out there and it's quite convenient to be hanging out there. You can just grab it and go, you know. But obviously if this was too low to the ground, you're going to have the hand wand or the hand nozzle touching the ground. And these things, they have holes in them that ants love to get into and make nests. And it's a quick way to ruin the front of your nozzle or to get extra maintenance by having to remove this to remove any ants that have been clogged up in here. You don't want this in the mud or in the dirt or unnecessarily a target for ants or other creatures to crawl into. The third thing for me is keeping it actually out of the way. You might think, well, lower is a less of a vision or an eyesore, but for me, if I'm using a ride-on or working around the yard, I can easily drive past in my ride on and move this out of the way. Whereas if it was lower, the potential is for the ride on deck to come in contact with this and you break it, or just me trying to reach down, I'd have to stop the ride on, pre prepare, move it out of the way, whatever. Now, I know it seems like a small point, but again, it's a good height for convenience sake that I can just walk past or drive past in a ride on or a push mower and move this out of the way easy enough. And if you are using one of these to position in other spots, like you buy secondary brackets and you want to remove it, you only want to buy one retractable hose and put it down the back as well. So move it wherever you need it. Well, then you don't want to be bending over and lifting. This is quite heavy. You don't want to be lifting from a bent over position all the time and placing it back onto the bracket when you're moving it. So you, at a height like this, it's easy just to bend the knees slightly and push up with the shoulders and you're not putting undue pressure on the lower back. Something to really think about if you're using this in two or three separate spots around your place. When it comes to the post, you want to make sure you get a good sturdy post. This one here is H4, which means it's meant for construction. It's treated, treated pine. Because you're burying this post into the ground, that's why you want it construction quality. Moisture, termites, and all sorts of things will have a crack at it. Fungi get into the wood, and you don't want to go through all the trouble of burying this post deep 60 centimetres, only for the thing to last 12 months, right at the base. And when you go to pull the hose out, the whole thing falls over. Obviously it's got to be wide enough so that you can mount the thing on the post. Make sure you use a good quality postcrete. It needs good quality concrete. You can get different standards of postcrete. Some for just the everyday post you put in and others are stronger, meant for corner posts and more durable and harder construction type load bearing reasons. Spend a few extra bucks. The difference between the really cheap post crete that's not as strong and the really strong stuff is about eight bucks a bag. I'd use two bags like I did in this job. If you've got a 60 centimeter 
hole or two and a half feet deep that should be ample to really hold this solid in in place for a decade or more to come and that's it well i hope you enjoyed this video on how to install a retractable hose unit on a post like this when you haven't got a wall or something else to mount it on i'm really happy with the way this has come out now as far as this unit goes it's a hose link unit there's some links in the description if you want to check them out. But as far as evaluation goes, I'll review this in about two weeks to maybe a month. Give me some time to work on it, pulling it out, putting it through its paces, and we'll see how this works. Then I'll do a video on it and let you all know what I think of this piece of kit. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already because we do lots of how-tos on this channel plus a heap of other stuff I'm sure you guys will enjoy. Bye for now.